there are people who are here today, not in here, just in general, who um, like having conversations with folks like me just to like string them along, like a telemarketer. So, actually, Luke Francois had a, a tweet. This is a number of months ago where he like literally just egged on this recruiter for a while because they called him about a skill set he hasn't used in five years. But because all they know, the recruiter knows how to do is a search string to find people. Um, it popped up, and hey, so he's doing Ruby now, but hey, so he, I'm joking, he didn't do COBOL 15 years ago. But let's just pretend he did, right? So he's getting an email or a phone call from a recruiter because COBOL appeared seven employers ago, and they don't care that he's doing Ruby today. I would on your profile. I would have something that says, here's what I'm looking for, here's what I want to do. I'm open to full-time or contract or whatever it is type opportunities. Be really specific so you can maybe try to whittle up the number of people like me they're going to get in contact with. Try to reduce the, 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 the spam a little bit. Uh, I did post last night on Twitter that if you had any questions but you didn't want to ask them today, just send them to me by email. Um, someone did ask, and this is not a promotion of my industry by any sense of the imagination. Um, the question was, should I be working with a search firm or um, I'm just going to zoom out of this and close this down and keep going because there is a couple things I want to show you. Um, do I want to say? Uh, sure. Can I take a whack at the computer and do like talk for a minute? Well, like these colors are going to be in future. No, no. <laughs> 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 That's really sweet. Yeah, it's actually logging off and logging back in. Oh, um, those pictures were to look at long enough to be another picture. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> this is the part where I'm not always the brightest tech guy on on the on the uh, uh, right ball. Um. So. If you're going to be working with a search firm or if you're a contractor, okay, make sure that your shops, your, if you're going through a, a consulting firm, make sure that they know where you've been submitted to. I've had three emails this week where someone has been submitted twice to the same company and now they're pissed off because they're no longer able to, to have an opportunity at that job, right? So let's just say Eric and I are competing consulting firms. And let's say that Jason Bates in the back of the room is this really cool tech guy, because he is. Um, and he is. So he's the chief technology guy at Bizzy, and I've known him since like 1990, give or take. Too long. So um, <laughs> that's why I'm picking up. If Eric sends him to Best Buy, I send him to Best Buy, Best Buy will no longer consider him for that opportunity because they don't know who to pay. You have to manage your career. You have to manage your resume. You have to be in control of this information at all times. So you may not want to tell a recruiter, an in-house recruiter, you probably don't tell them, but if you're being submitted to, to positions by folks like me, you actually do want to tell us what's going on for as much as you feel comfortable with. Woohoo! Um, uh, so that was something that came in yesterday. The other one was I've got a salary review coming up, and how do I ask for more money? Um, so if you happen to be in the room today. Um, Part of it is I want you to start you today documenting what you're doing on your job. You created the code that you're doing is this much times better. It produced these results. It's making our efficiency, our, our efficiency this much better. Whatever it is that you would use. So that when it comes time for your salary review, and they're saying we're going to give you three percent, you can go screw you. I want five, or I want six percent, or I want something. But if you can't document what you've been doing at your job, you ha right? You, you can't force that issue. So what are you doing that's making you more valuable than employers that you can ask them for more money? So be a little bit aggressive about it. You can do that now in this market. I mean, you want to be careful still, right? You don't want them to say, no, fine, and you're fired. Is that a thought? I, I don't think I'd use the term screw you. Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> screw you is not a good way to probably phrase it out to folks. What if you... By the way, I actually, that I just said the F word under my breath and didn't get through it. I only said it once in the previous session. Um, you want to be able to start managing your career, right? We know that you're in demand. The IT unemployment rate in Minneapolis is less than 2% or so we think we have it figured, which basically means that if you have a skill set that's remotely in demand, you're probably working. Maybe you're in between gigs. Or maybe something has happened where your resume sucks so bad 
someone has a contact. Which now means you have some power in this game. And don't abuse it. Okay, the idea is this. There are a lot of companies right now who do not realize that you're in as much demand as you are. Okay? If you're at the same place that you were at four years ago and you haven't had much of a salary increase, they may not realize that the market has changed. Change is most of how they act. Okay? So what I want to get you to is um, know what's going on in the market. Right? If the dot net folks for the most part didn't even know there was a recession. They heard about it. It didn't really impact them at all. If your skills are, please don't be offended by this statement, run of the mill. You could have been offshored by now a couple, three times during the economy, right? Because if you're just a coder, just sitting in the room, in a corner, you don't want to talk to anybody, somebody in another part of the world can probably do your job for a third of the price. But if you can talk the business side of things, if you want to learn the project management side, the business analyst, if you want to talk to a non-tech fool like me, and still be able to go back to your team and say, here's what we need to do, you aren't outsourceable, you're not offshoreable, right? Those are the skills that are going to be needed going forward. Learn the business side of things as much as you can. I'm trying to think what else people had asked me before. I mean, be able to stop there for a second. So questions, thoughts, comments. Go. Yes, you mentioned uh, process. So with what Scrum certifications or whatever project management certifications is the most advanced process? So the certification question, I always dodge it, which is simply, is that the answer that you're going to be looking for? My experience has been lately it's probably for the, the better, not for the worse. Companies are actually looking for people who have experience in things, and they're not so much even caught up anymore if you even have a degree. It's can you actually, it doesn't, it's great that you're certified in something. I want the next line, which is, and I've used it, or I've done it, and here, you get what I'm saying? Right. Then your certification matters. If you're just doing it for show, which a lot of people do, it's not going to matter to you. And I don't know if it's going to be worth the three grand or the ten grand or whatever it's going to cost you. You may not actually make that back. Uh, so I wouldn't say that there's a particular thing to go after right now, right? Again, the dot, NAT, the job, the PHP folks, the information security, uh, anything to do with data analytics, data warehouse, that's just not going to happen. Um, I don't think that there's, uh, during the recession, like what industries were better or worse, there wasn't, right? So if you say United Health Group and let's say um, Medica were across the street from each other in Golden Valley, what one would be doing, the other might be doing the opposite. One might be hiring project managers, the other one could have been laying them off. So that was what was funky about our town during the recession was because there wasn't, you couldn't say tech sucked. Healthcare was great. Finance was, you could, there was, the, you know, what, what Wells Fargo had going on was Wells Fargo. Doesn't mean that that's what U.S. Bank had going on. So don't, don't get totally caught up on industries. I wouldn't get caught up on the certification. I would ask the folks, who you're also getting them through, and what has, like what, they should be able to quote you, whether it's an accurate number or not, how it has impacted the people who have the certification. Oh, well, we've seen a 10% increase in pay over five years, and then you can figure it out. If they can't even quote you on that, then I would be really skeptical about it in the first place. They're trying to sell you something. They should be able to back it up. Do you have a question? Or someone else alerted? No? What? What? I've got a question. Yeah. What would you say is kind of the kind of the going rate, again, hourly rate for contractors versus full time for some of these kind of skills? So here's the weird part. So uh, for 13 years, I was a full time firm guy, right? So Best Buy would need an Oracle DBA. I'd go find them a full time Oracle DBA. Um, 14, 15 months or so ago, a friend of mine, um, his consulting firm got acquired. He was pissed. He didn't want it to be acquired, but he, it didn't matter what he thought. The owner forgot that he didn't have a non compete or non solicit. Yay for him. He called me up and he said, "Let's go." That was November of 2010. At, so we wanted, I wanted to make a shift to start working, focusing on the contracting consulting market. However, in the process of a coming out of the recession, that is when companies started realizing, wow, we want to start converting these folks to full-timers. I missed the boat. Like, I, like, it went this way and I went that way. So now what you have is a lot of company companies are trying to convert people to full-timers. A lot of full-timers want to go to contracting because that's where the money is. Um, we've had this series of upticks and plateaus since the spring of 2010. The market kind of came off the bottom in March of 2010, give or take that time. Kind of. Coming out of the recession in 2003, or the, the not the post 9-11, post Y2K, we went from off to on. Everybody knew about it. So everybody knew that salaries were going up. Everybody knew that you were in demand. 
You were asking for more money, but you were being reasonable about it. In this economy, it's funky because a lot of folks still don't realize that you're in demand. So I, I'm seeing people who are, I'm seeing full-timers looking for a 15 or 20% increase from employer A to employer B, and they're not getting it in most cases because the companies, you need to come down maybe a little and not ask for so much, and they have to come up. That's what the market's demanding. The market doesn't see this yet. So I don't know if there's necessarily now, is it better to be on one side or the other? I would be weighing the opportunities, which is a little bit what I wanted to talk about too. Since you have options, start asking way more questions than you normally would. It's really great that you want to offer me $65 an hour to go do this thing, but what is the team like? What are we going to be working on? What is the average length of someone like me, you know, is it 30 days or does it actually go six months? You now have the ability to ask some more questions that maybe you didn't have three years ago. Because maybe you want to go on a certain path. If you're looking for full-time stuff, I would be asking, so what is the average tenure of someone here? What is the, you know, is my code ever going to be seen? Some folks don't mind being in a queue farm in a really big company in downtown Minneapolis. I call them large, solely organizations. <laughs> Last year I named one of them and it got me in a lot of trouble. So I won't. <laughs> Although I really want to. <laughs> like Target or KBC. Maybe one of those. <laughs> Not necessarily one of those, but something like one of those. Some folks don't mind just going in and putting in their 40 or 45 hours and leaving. Some of you want to, you don't mind working 50, 55 hours a week for a small company because the code matters because, you know, there are 300,000 customers are going to see it. It's kind of up to you now what you want to do. I wouldn't be greedy. I wouldn't jump too far yet. But it's in your favor now. But don't abuse it. Um, right? Minneapolis is a really, Minneapolis St. Paul, really, really large, small town. I guarantee you that if you start playing hardball with somebody, you're going to see them again in three or four years. The economy might be a little bit different. Now you're going to be like, man, I wish I wasn't such a jerk. And I'm saying the same thing, though, to my recruiter HR friends, too, right? They were a jerk. They were jerks for about two and a half years. And now it's coming back to roost in a really bad way for them, right? They didn't get back to people. They lowballed on rates, and everybody knew about it, right? So now they're getting payback. Don't let this, don't let what you experienced three years ago come back to you X years from now. Other thoughts? Yeah. Thinking back on that, what would you say, maybe like the top three or four um, advice tips you would give to a technical person interacting with a recruiter or a headhunter? The first one is, and, I, and whether you would be talking to me or if you would be talking to Eric at Jobdig or Jason at Business, I would, okay, my opinion, you can disagree with this, and I will tell you that if you put seven recruiter HR folks up here, we would bicker about this for two and a half hours. I would bring the salary or rate question up in the first conversation. Not the first thing, but I would do it in the first conversation. What is the salary range for folks like me at your company? What is your target building? And make it relaxed. Make it not be what is, right? Give them some room to fudge. Give yourself something to understand. Either I do or I don't fit in what they're looking for. Because I'm seeing so much time getting wasted now on the interview process both from the candidate and the, and the employer side of it. There are some really large solace organizations in downtown Minneapolis, not to be named. <laughs> they don't have a salary conversation until the third and final interview. And you're like, that far apart. And you just wasted two or three weeks. Maybe you missed out on an opportunity. Maybe you're just pissed off now. Right? Be polite about it. Because they're taught not to. Right? The idea is whoever, whoever answers the question first loses. Right? So if I say, if Eric says to me, well, Paul, how much money are you making? And I'll say, 100 bucks an hour. And he's thinking, shit, we were going to pay 120. You know, hey, I, you know, or, he, or he'd be going, we were only going to pay 80. But I would still rather find this out now than in two weeks. Or after six hours of interview. Or after filling out the six page online web form, have a phone screen, talk to the manager, finally get to the team to only find out that you're 15% over what they want to pay and they're never going to get that far. That actually might be my first, second, my third, and my fourth. I would stop wasting the time, right? You had to play the game before, and I'm not saying you don't have to play it now, right, to be clear. Take some control over the situation. 
I also would suggest that um, candidates, you guys need to start doing some more homework on the companies that you're looking at. Right? So you all know whether it's the on, whether you hear about the crazy stat, 85% of recruiter HR folks, internal or outside, are using social networks and blah 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 to find folks. Why are you not lurking about us before you go in for an interview? You should be. You know, if I'm going to go in for an interview at Busy, and I figure that I'm going to see Jason Baker, man, I'm going to hop on LinkedIn to figure out well, where are you going to school and what does he do and what's he about? Is he someone I actually want to work for one day? You can take some control in this situation. Um, I would be looking to the company have a career page on Facebook. Because a lot of the big companies are, but some of the smaller tech companies are, are really into this now too, right? The Nerdery, um, W3i. Code 42, are all getting into a lot, they're thinking more about this employer branding concept. And they're trying to tell you, here's what it's like to work here. Use those tools, find out if, I, I mean, it gets the part where you know, I say lurk, don't stalk, right? But I, I really start trying to find some more info before you even go in to see this place where I want to hang my hat for the next six months or six years. Yeah. Um. I always get nervous when somebody clears their throat and then leans forward. I'm joking, I swear. So in my situation, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really excited about my company's direction, okay? and I don't really think I'm getting paid by work. But I'm really excited about the next project that's coming up, and yep. I'm a little torn on it. So basically, I, I find myself the only reason. I'm where I'm at is because I want the experience that the next two years are going to give me. Yeah. <laughs> Says the guy who scratched his face. I would try to find. Eric, what would you do? Have you felt like this before? Like, oh, I'm excited about the next thing, and then the next thing doesn't actually happen? I would um, probably guess yes. Well, the next thing is going to happen because we, we map out things so far in advance. Uh, right, but two years ago, were you excited about something that was coming up in 18 months? No. Okay. My gut reaction is if you're not excited about what you're doing about now, there's opportunities out there that you could be excited about what you're doing. But that's from the programmer, not the recruiting standpoint. Sorry. I don't know if I can answer your question because I think that's just one that you guys, you know, I always say me, myself, and I have to go for a walk and figure out what we think. Yeah. Right? Here's one thing I really want to be clear about, too. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Okay? How many folks have gone somewhere and had really bad buyer's rewards? You know? Right? So sometimes, I don't know who to attribute to, sometimes the grass is greener where you water it. You know, it's this idea of how can I make this situation, which might not be what I'm really looking for, better? Can I take out some more responsibility? Um, if you do end up going to a new gig, I would try to do, again, if they're going to ask you how much do you make, and I would reply with, you know, here's the range that I'm looking for, and also inquire about health care benefits and continuing education and education policy, and I want to get into what they should be thinking what's your total compensation and you should be thinking about what you want too. Like what do you really want? Or if somebody says to you, because this is one of the questions you emailed too, I want to get 70 grand, I was offered 64, what do I do? Well, you can counter them. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, what else can you get? Will they, because you do some nights and weekends work at home, will they now cover your cell phone bill and your internet cost? Because that's another, that can be another grand or more in a year. Will they send you to a user or a tech conference once or twice a year? Right? Because that's now not impacting that salary range. That's now coming out of a different budget. Well, so now I'll send you to, let's say you wanted to go South by Southwest, because it's in my head. You know, they'll cover that X dollars for you that you wouldn't have to take out, or you wouldn't probably be able to get. Can you get, can you work from Fridays during this, from Memorial Day to Labor Day at home? Or can you work 10 four hour days? Ten four hour days. Can you work for it? Holy crap, I think I'm getting tired. You know, can I work four ten hour days during the summer so I can have Fridays off? I would think about some of the other things that can you get. If you are working for somebody downtown and parking's really expensive, can you get them to cover that? Again, it kind of comes out of a different budget. 
You can't always get the salary number to move. Sometimes it's just fixed. But can we talk about something else? Or can I get my review at six months instead of a year? So maybe you can get a little bit more of an increase earlier versus trying to get a larger one later. Maybe that. Think about ways to make it work that we always get stuck on these hardcore numbers, but what's everything else? Maybe their health insurance, maybe their health coverage is so great that you're going to save yourself five grand a year. Or there's less out of pocket. Um, find alternative ways to try to increase the total compensation. Don't get stuck on how many dollars am I going to get every two weeks. Somebody over here. Related to uh, the work from home question, as more companies are going virtual for a lot of their development and stuff, yeah. how does that impact salary and compensation packages? I haven't seen it. So the question is, if you are doing the virtual or if you're doing the distance working, I haven't seen it matter much in terms of compensation and salary and benefits and stuff. Um, I also don't hear people talking about it a lot, which is also why I think that I don't think that's really matter. Because otherwise, I would hear the HR recruiters folks talking about, well, geez, we're going to pay less for, you know, whatever, or, or we have to pay more to attract somebody. I don't hear it being an issue. Eric, about the selling that one? Yeah, I got no idea. Yeah, Sorry. I, I don't hear it being talked about, which is not a great answer to give because no one's talking about it. I don't think it matters, but it's actually the answer to give. Okay. Yeah. The only time I noticed some difference, though, is that if you're in Minneapolis and you're working for somebody in Silicon Valley, you sometimes have that cost of living adjustment to think about. You know, where maybe that person in Silicon Valley is getting, I'm making up a stupid number, 120 an hour, but they only want to give you 100. But there is a third, about a 30%, if not more, cost of living between here and the valley, right? Mm -hmm. So don't, so maybe have that in the back of your head a little bit, too. Um, there was just a salary survey that came out, right? The top, and I <coughs> blogged about it, right? I just did the list. The top 10 cities, the top 10 best cities for pay. You know, and it was shocker, right? San Francisco, New York, Boston, Austin, Texas. Or I caught, you know, come on. There's a dude that co contacted me to sub a blog six, seven weeks ago. Um, he's like, hey, I'm moving to Minneapolis. The story is this. He's a Java developer at a little company called Goldman Sachs. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. <laughs> and he's like, hey, well, you know, my wife's from Elk River. I'm from Chicago. We both went to school at the University of Illinois. She got a job in New York City after graduation. We've been out here for seven years. Um, he used a different phrase of we're trying to get pregnant. Um, <laughs> it sounded a lot like I'm trying to knock her up. Um, <laughs> and the idea was, I want to come to Minneapolis. What's the tech market like? What's the job scene like? What's the startup community like? What's the big company stuff like? And then his other part was, and please, I'm not looking for anything in the regulated industry because I'm tired of financial services. So he goes through this whole conversation. And I ask him, how much are you making? And I know I'm going to freak out. It was my base is 160. Really? Because now I'm thinking, take out the 30% of a cost of living adjustment. Now the guy, you know, now you're talking 110, 120, 130. For what he did in Minneapolis, you could, you could justify it. But when I told him that, he freaked out. <laughs> right, what do you mean? I'm going a 30 grand pay, cut and pay. How big is your apartment and how much are you paying? And that was a done conversation. Because shit, for you to get a really huge house for half the price. And they want to raise the kids in the Midwest. So when you are doing things in other parts of the country, maybe have that in the back of your mind. That the cost of living, some of that stuff might might be different. What about someone like me who's, um, I kind of started up as a CNA because that was where, yeah. where I live, that's where, that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. And I needed, I needed money. I don't have any experience really in this field right now. So I'm kind of already a step behind. <coughs> so again, not a lot of great answers, but some ideas for you to think about. Uh, I would start volunteering somewhere tomorrow okay. uh, for a nonprofit or a community organization in town. There is a demand for it. Um, so the nerdery had their overnight challenge, what, two, three weeks ago, whatever it was. And again, it was, what, 18 teams, 18 nonprofits. They had 82 requests from the nonprofit side. If you want to go find a way to create, and this is even for those of you, right, who are in a gig, but you know, can I go learn a new language and do it on someone else's time and have something to show for it at the end? 
So let's say you're on the developer programming side of things. Maybe you want to start getting into some web stuff. It could be, hey, who do you know? Who needs a volunteer? And where can I go start cutting, getting some new experience? Where can I, and then be able to show folks afterwards, here's what I've done. That would be one of the first thing that I would do. Um, the other thing is that you might have to really suck it up and go work for a really large solace organization in town um, and be one of 15 tech support dudes on the second shift for now. And, and it sucks. But a lot of people in this room are thinking they've done that too. Um, the other part is, is that when you're, when you're into this, though, is why would somebody hire you? So you may be, you may have the CNA and, 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 but here's why they should, they're looking for a junior web guy. I'm just thinking about that. Okay. Explain to them why they should hire you then. You, 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 you pick up and you learn code quickly. Um, you know, the ramp up time for you won't be that large. Uh, it could be something in your past where you can say, I also have this other experience or skill set, so I know your industry or I know your business. This is the same thing for everybody else in the job search too then. Why would you hire me? Respectfully, there are two groups of people in my life who do the worst job search. You guys, and my recruiter HR friend, who you would think would know how this works. But think about why would you hire you and be ready to articulate. Remember, you know, you're doing marketing and PR of yourself. The other thing is, is can you find maybe some really low dollar an hour contract work on the side? Maybe you're just doing some, again, maybe you're just doing a support role, or maybe you're just cleaning up some code, or something. If anybody else wants to jump in on this with some advice, I take it now, because clearly I'm standing right um, Internship. If you have the time to be able to go, you know, this is that part, right? But maybe I have, I've got a full-time job, so I can't find an internship, but can you at least volunteer 20 hours a month for somebody? There are a lot of user groups out there for various technologies and companies and areas. So the user groups? Yeah. If you're a developer, uh, you can get a GitHub profile and put your side project up there and contribute to an open source project. Create your own web page. I know there's no little browser plugin that allows you to be able to do something simple, right? You get it out there on the home store, right? People start knowing your name. The idea of going on just building something small and just putting it out there? Mm -hmm. So then when you go interview somewhere, you know, you have something you can talk about and you're passionate about to see you get in the door. Because I, I want to know that you do something on the side and you're intrigued by something versus CNA, you're interested in technology, you have a project that you can talk about and be passionate about. I'll pick you over somebody that's got two years IT experience because your passion is something versus that piece. Your answer is way better than mine. You can talk about why you did it too. Like I saw a problem, it was my own problem, I fixed it, and this was the outcome, right? So you're much more in that business. Point here's how, here's that. what I did. You did the JavaScript, you know, I did this, and like, great. I mean, a lot of people do that. So you solve the problem for people, right? And you can easily answer that question. What are your weaknesses? Where do you feel that you should do better? Because they always ask that one question in the interview. So you probably need to ask something where you say, you know, I kind of felt like I didn't, wasn't able to do this, so I went out and volunteered. Or just, you show how you found that you maybe didn't have enough skill set. So you guys don't even need me here. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Way better answer than I ever gave you, right? Do you have a friend or a mentor? Like a friend or family member that could mentor you and help you? Well, I'm going to school right now, so there's many people around me that I can ask, <laughs> I guess. So let's change the topic for a second. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask from the other perspective. Does that help, though? Yeah. Okay. You have position goals that I can help you, and you have an active side of the academy to fill those positions. What are some tips from that side of the goals? I know, probably a lot of you are looking for jobs. I'm joking when I say that, I swear. Sure. You just missed my other session. Um, I, I, does the question make sense, though? It does. I swear I'm joking when I say that. Um, first of all, I did on Tuesday or Wednesday post a recruiting for startups and tech companies, and I posted it on my blog as a slide chat. It's a quick 30 minute thing. Did it work? Was it okay? Because it was the first time I had done something like that. Yeah, I'm used to doing it live, and I'm like staring out my window watching the birds fly by, right? Um, it's a competitive market. And if, so now why would you work for you? Or why would you go to work at your company? You know, um, everybody in the room has a choice. So, um, Joel Splotsky did a thing at ERE, which is a national um, HR recruiter event two weeks ago. And everything he said I already knew, but he was in a room of like 500 people and they were all like, you walk on water. And he, did, he gave a great presentation, but he, part of it was, here are the 10 things about your to recruit for in the tech community, and salary was seven. 
in his book. So it really was coming down to location and what's the office like and culture. And I want to work with smart people and will my code be seen and will we actually finish the project versus we're going to work on something for the next 10 weeks and oh, we pulled funding. I guess kind of the angle I'm taking is like the DI, DBA. Yeah. But W for have all kinds of positions open. Yeah. Did you like my, did you see the blog post? I did, yeah, I think I reviewed it. So we're seeing, we get a lot of candidates in, but they don't fit, they don't have. Well, and there's also, I wish I would have. Is there a reason they're on the job market? I wish I would have remembered this for the last one. I'm not saying you do. Employers have really unreasonable expectations today. The joke that I made in the last one a little bit was, so I need to speak three languages, play chess, blindfold, and be able to sing a baby a lullaby. Or you won't hire me. I think that we have to start doing some more internships, apprenticeships, and we have to do some more on-the-job training. Uh, there was a, oh, I'm not going to find it in time. Some survey came, no, it was the Department of Labor said by 2020 or 2025, whatever it was, the demand for, with programmers and developers, they had a bunch of different staff, was going to grow 22% in the U.S between now and X years from now. We're already hosed with not having enough folks. And now we're going to have that much more of a demand for you all, which is really great for career path for you guys. But it's, it's a lot about, do we really need someone to do these eight things? It could be these are core. These would be nice to have, and we would love it if you played with this at night. Our, and this is the same thing for, for you guys too, though. Is, is do you really, can you ask the question, do you really need these? five skill sets. I have these three nailed. I play around with this one, and you're right, I don't know this one. But otherwise, I'm who you're looking for. Unfortunately, you've got folks on the, on the internal side, I'm going to pick on the recruiter HR folks for a minute, who are giving this, given this dream list, right, this wish list from a CIO, a director, or a project manager saying that you have to have everything like this or we won't consider you. And you have to have a master's degree in speaking French. Those companies are having a hard time finding stuff. So it's, can you bend a little? Can you, the other part is just, and it's just, again, just a marketing PR branding question too for you guys, but for anybody. It's, well, why would somebody come to work there? I love your company, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come see me if you want to do that. <laughs> well, some of the things you're talking about, the Department of Labor, some of the problem is you've got a lot of baby boomers that are retired. Yeah. That are taking the knowledge with them. Yeah. Of these legacy systems. Yeah. So they have to do one or two things. They have to get, Educate people in older systems, yep. uh, cobalt and things like that, or they're going to have to migrate off of the defining, not permitted technologies, the legacy systems, over to new systems. They're going to have to move these things over to a web environment, over to a dot net, over to whatever type of environment. So that's where some of that programming effort's coming from because you're forced to retire some of these systems and have to move them forward. Into, so it's not only migration of data, looking at your ETL tools and how you're going to move that stuff over, but also looking at creating new functionality and everything that you may not have had because we were stuck in the mainframe yep. environment or with the, the program we've been using in Fox Pro for 20 years. I thought, don't laugh, I saw something for FileMaker Pro the other day. Yeah, yeah seriously. It's, I and I'm like, there's still little pockets of stuff here and there all over oh. different companies. So we've got 10 more minutes. So I want, to, I want to pause for one second. So your search results are always different, but here's something about the networking side of the job search. If you want to start figuring out who have like CIO titles in town, for the contractors, consultants, you're thinking I need to start building my pipeline, um, right? And, and please, because the market is good does not mean you can be lazy on your pipeline of business, okay? Because you don't know when something's going to happen somewhere. Um, so. Results on LinkedIn always depend on how many connections you have, what groups you belong to, and if you um, paid for a, 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 a pro account. Yeah. Pro was a hard word for me there, apparently. Uh, so if you click on the advanced search, uh, and under title, I'm just making this up as I go. So if you were to do like CIO or um, Put that in quotes. You want these folks to be currently in this role <coughs> within 50 miles of downtown Minneapolis. Let's just pretend that's where you want to start. <coughs> All right, so you have 434 names. 
So now I want to find the folks who work in the health group. That's where you can start your list. So then you could be like, okay, I don't know, because I literally I don't know who Robin Brown is. Senior Director, IT Operations, Community, and State Office of the CI. That's a really messed up title, but we'll go with it. Let's say Robin's who I want to talk to. I'm going to scroll down the right hand side to figure out who do I now know. You know, um, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't know Mark very well. I use LinkedIn, obviously, different than most of you will. Mine's a quantity versus quality thing. It's what I do for, you know, for me, connections matter more than quality connections in a lot of cases. Oh, I do know Mark. <laughs> um, but I could be like, hey, Mark. I might not do it through LinkedIn, though. Like, hey, Mark. So I really want to I really want to get in touch with Robin. How well do you know her? Can you help me with an email introduction? Or I know that her group's going to have a new project in six months. I want to reach out to her now to figure out who's going to be staffing it. Or are they going to be hiring full-timers? Right? I'm thinking about who's going to be doing what next. If um, you got to fill the pipeline. I just get so the, the, the recession I will in there, in case you know me well enough to know, it didn't visibly scar me, but it did. Like, I still have shivers and night sweats about the recession. Right, 60% of my industry went away during the recession. Like, if you don't need a search firm, if you're not hiring, why do you need a search firm recruit, right? It sucked. Really bleeding bad. Because I don't want to use the upper again. Um, I am constantly thinking about what am I working on six months from now? Who's going to be working on a project after Labor Day? And I would suggest that you guys need to be doing this to email the market in your favor because you don't know that if Greece goes under, Portugal goes next, Germany has an issue, Wall Street tanks, and you're all hosed again. So just because time, I don't want you to be fearful, I just want it to be always nagging in the back of your mind. Is my career path okay? So I don't want to like freak you out, but. Well, so in the figure, if you're a couple of jobs, you're not fear from working, how often should you be entertaining, you know, the doctors you get to LinkedIn, going on interviews? I mean, my first job out of college, I was there for eight and a half years, and when they went under, you know, I had to fill the job, and you know, interviewing is not my strong suit. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's after eight years, it's all right, you know, I got to roll on. So, I mean, I've read that you, know, you should be interviewing, so just keep it going, seriously looking, at least keeping that interview skill up, you're not, you know, Jason, I'm going to let you take that one. Um, because you're going to be torn on the same thing, right? You're an employer, but you're also managing your own career. Yeah, I think you're constantly all the time. And you're doing it through... Hey, can you guys hear me okay back here? Okay. So you're doing it through networking organization, meaning like um, you're doing it by keeping your skills updated and keeping, and keeping yourself relevant. I look at uh, so many people who...
who's got a burning question if I don't answer before we leave in these pits? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you talk about jobs that are 40 hours a week, less than 40 hours a week? Because um, I have a lot of reasons that I would like to work maybe 20 hours a week, and I'm not trying to find those jobs and how to negotiate that kind of thing. So there's the part where I would start saying, I would start doing this sort of, not so much on LinkedIn, but just with your network. I would start putting myself out there. I am looking for a 20 or 30 hour a week gig, doing this technology from home. Who do you know who meets someone like me? Because now with the market being a little bit better now, there's some room to be able to say, I'm looking, or I only want to go in three days a week. But again, it's not that I don't, I, it's not that I will only go in, right? It's, I'm looking for this thing. Take a step back and who do you know who needs someone like me? Uh, one more quick thing I want to do is everybody else has, who had their, had their hand up? Yes. When I asked, like, I am contracted since before I got married. Um, I'm getting phone calls with like pretty ridiculous rates, uh, but I'm only one that works at home, so I'm only one that has insurance. Yes. Is it even reasonable to think that it's possible to kind of have a contracting um, career at, at this stage? Sort of there thing? are th a number of the contract shops in town, whether they're specialized in something or they're just a, a staff augmentation group. Um, we'll, they're, they're back into the part about doing the insurance part again, but of course your rates are going to go down. You know, it's, sure. you're still paying for one way or the other. Okay. But more of them are realizing that if I don't do this, we're not going to have a talent pool. We need to grow my business for my part. Okay. So there's some more room there. that. One thing I want you to think about is, is that if you are doing an active job search, like I go to the MEMA site all the time, uh, Minnesota Interactive Marketing Association. Some professional organizations also start to offer benefits. Yeah. So that's another thing too to start looking at some of your benefits that you can get through some of your professional organizations. So like, just a suggestion. I know that that seems to be more common thing. So I don't. I, I I I'm doing this on the plot on the fly. Let's say I want to look at this web production artist position in Lifetime, and I'm scrolling down to see if by any chance. Of course they didn't. I'm a sucker for contact. Like I'm, I hoard, literally hoard people's contact information. Um, and I'm hoping that I can figure this one out quick. It's the idea of, so you're not looking for a social media internship, right? <laughs> but I'm looking to figure out who is Hannah. I'm going to drop Hannah's name in the link then. And I'm going to figure out who, do I, who knows her. The cool part for her, she already has her email address. But you might be thinking, if you want to go work for RSP Marketing and you think they've got a web development position or you know someone who works there and says really good things about the company, just because you see something posted that's not for you doesn't mean that they're not hired. Or, are you looking for someone like me before the end of 2012? And it's another way of kind of repeat around some of these questions, which is, I'm looking to make a change by Halloween. So you could go today or tomorrow but your thing between now and the end of the year, you want to start 2013 in a new opportunity. You can also do the networking in that sense too. I, I believe that by the beginning of the fourth quarter of this year, I'm going to be looking for a new gig. Are you going to be hiring? Right? It's the idea of I don't have to worry about the intensity of doing a job search or an interview now. It's can we build a relationship over the next few months? That's also a way of being able to kind of try to do a job search too. Yep. I think one thing you can also do is go into things like the news group. And you can look for at company.com and it'll allow you to do the research to find out maybe what type of technology companies are implementing, what people are doing, but it's a good way to find some contacts and also do a little bit of background uh, reconnaissance work as far as finding out more about a company. So um, one of the things that ethical hackers do is we use news groups and blogs and things like that to go back and find things to do our reconnaissance work, but it's also good just from trying to figure out more about a company. So I would go in and look at, find out what their email address is for that company or something. And that's what I was going to do now. And I swear we'll go because I just realized there's going to be a lunch line. Uh, if you're trying to figure out how to get in touch with someone, most of you will probably already know this. Uh, whoops, add a second quotation mark. If you add the asterisk, put a couple spaces in there. It's best Buy, so you have to scroll down. But usually at a smaller company, you, you can find it. So I'm actually going like to fast forward to like number five. I'm just looking for anybody to figure out how is it first name, dot last name, right first initial, last name. Um, this is how I work. I almost said stock. This is, this is a working activity. Um, right, but how do you find someone's email address at Target or Best Buy? Um, and you want to be really proactive about it. Some companies like Ameriprise, though, they use the middle initial. Nah, suck. Um, <laughs> it really makes it hard for me to recruit people when I have to know the person's middle initial. Um, I am, 
I don't have any more going on the rest of the day. So if you guys have questions, if you have some thoughts, you want to talk, um, I'd love to, you know, live just hang out the rest of the day. Does this help? Yeah. Thank you. All right.